Thank you for checking out this video. You are with Coach Glenda from Tyreshield Academy. Okay, so we're going to start off with the first question. This question is a cube question. So looking at the diagram, we have a cube with six faces. And the figure is actually shown that it's made up of nine smaller cubes, which is over here. So the question is asking you how many cubes you will have two faces painted if the object, the entire object is going to be painted blue. So how we can do this question is actually to look at individual layers. So what you'll notice is that for the first and the third layer, if we were going to be drawing it out, just the top layer, we're going to look at individual layers. You can actually find that there will be this cube here, this cube, this cube, and this cube with two faces painted. So you can see that actually there will be four cubes painted with two faces painted blue. And you will have to look at your second layer now. So for the second layer, we're going to do the same thing. We will dissect it and look at its individual layer. But you'll notice that the cubes that are going to be having two faces painted blue will be slightly different from the first and third layer. It's going to be the corner over here. So take note that you will not actually have the top surface and the bottom surface painted blue because it is between the first and third layer. So it is only going to be the corner as what we are shading over here. And you don't want to miss out the final one which is at the back. So similarly, there will also be four cubes with two faces painted blue. So to find the total number of cubes, all you have to do is 4 times 3 equals to 12. And there you have your answer for question 1. Moving on to question 2. There are 4 blue, 5 black and 3 orange marbles in a bottle. Without looking, at least how many marbles must Mark take so that there will be marbles of three different colors? So by looking at this question, you should be able to tell that this is a pigeonhole principle question. And for pigeonhole principle kind of questions, you must always think of the worst case scenario. And in this case, the worst case scenario is actually to keep choosing two marbles that are of the same color. Okay? Two marbles, two types of marbles which are of the same color such that you just keep on cannot picking the third color marble. So for here, what you want to think of is to see which two types of marbles, which two colored marbles should I be choosing? And you will actually be choosing the blue and the black because they have the most number of marbles. So you will keep choosing blue and black marbles but not the orange marbles. And because of this, there will only be two colors here that are chosen. And you'll know that the next marble, which will be an orange marble, will satisfy the condition where you will actually pick the marbles of three different colors. And so your answer will actually be 10 marbles. So moving on to the next question, question 3. You're supposed to find the value of 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 all the way following the pattern minus 30 plus 31. 
So what you should actually realize is minus 2 plus 3 give me 1. Minus 4 plus 5 will also give me 1. Minus 6 plus 7 give me 1. And the final minus 30 plus 31 will also give me 1. So what you should actually be finding is how many pairs of 1 are there. You take the last number, 31 minus 1 equals to 30. And you can take 30 divided by 2 because two numbers are each each make up a pair of 1. So there will actually be 15 pairs of your value 1. So by right, you will just take 15 times 1, which will still give you 15. But take note, you actually neglected this 1 at the very start because it does not constitute any of your pattern. So what you have to do is to remember to add your 15 plus 1 at the back as your final working. So the answer for question 3 should be 16. Alright, so moving on to question 4. How many shortest paths are there from A to B? And you are given a hint where you can only use right and downward movements in this question. So following the arrow here. So for this kind of question, it's similar to a counting type of question. Okay, all you have to do is to add up the diagonal numbers. What do I mean by that? So let's take a look at this dot over here. How many ways will there be going to able to be able to reach that? There will only be one way, which is through here. Okay? And you will notice that for downward over here, this arrow, and this dot, there will also be one way. So what we'll do for this kind of questions is to actually just write okay, the number of ways to reach that particular point. Okay, that point, you just write it at the corner. And now you want to look at this point here. Because you realize that there is one way and another way. Okay? And how you can kind of find the number of ways quickly is to add the diagonals. The diagonals which we have drawn here. Okay, follow the arrows that are pointing to this point. There's one here and one here. So you add 1 plus 1, that will give you 2. So just write it at the corner of that point. Okay, you do the same for all the other points in this figure. So you realize that this will be a faster method instead of counting all the way from the start A to B. One way, two ways. Okay, you're bound to miss some of the ways. So you will be able you should be able to do this by just counting the next one over here one way and you go downwards one way downwards one way downwards one way okay so you actually notice that the corners usually start off with just one way there's only going downwards we look at the next column here this dot is actually going to be 3 you add up 1 plus 2, okay, 1 plus 3 will give me 4, 1 plus 4 will give me 5, 1 plus, six, 1 plus 5 will give me 6. You do column by column towards point B. So we do the same way for this, it will be 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4, 10, okay. And you have here, 10 plus 5, 15, 15 plus 6, 21. So you switch this part of the rectangle now. You have to draw your arrows to be very sure of the direction that you are going to be looking at. So if you actually notice that this point starting here, it's going to look similar to the top one over here. There will only be one way, which is your 10 ways to go another 10 ways okay because you cannot move upwards you cannot go from here to here okay you can only go right so if you're gonna move you just keep going right now you're gonna move down here will be 25 down and right here will be 46 do the same for the next column this will be 35 and 
81. And finally, the last column, it will be 45. And the number of ways, okay, the shortest path to go from A to B will then be 45 plus 81, okay, which will give me 1, 2, 6. And that will be your answer for question 4. So we'll move on to question 5 of this paper. The teacher has a bag of sweets. If she gives each student nine sweets, she will need another two sweets. But if she gives each student eight sweets, there will be five remaining sweets. So the question asks how many sweets does the teacher have? So this is actually a excess shortage question. And there is a way to answer this kind of question for excess shortage. Firstly, you need to identify where is the excess and where is the short shortage. You will realize that there are actually two scenarios in the question, but take note that because this question has an if statement, which is a conditional statement, okay, the process of giving the sweets does not actually happen. So when the question asks how many sweets does the teacher have, they, were, they are actually asking for the initial number, which is in the bag of sweets. So what you can do is to follow excess plus shortage divide by difference. And that will actually give you the number of students. Okay, because you are actually splitting the sweets equally to every student. So for the both cases, you have case 1 and case 2. If we look at case 1, you'll realize that there will actually be a shortage of 2 sweets. And if we look at case 2, there will be an excess of 5 sweets. So following the formula, what we can do is 5 plus 2 divided by the difference. And you actually notice that the difference in the cases, one case is giving each student 9 sweets and the other case is giving each student 8 sweets. The difference is actually 1. So 5 plus 2 divided by 1 will just give me 7 students. But we're not done with the question by finding the students only. We have to use that number to actually find the number of sweets. So take any case. Okay, for example, let's use case one. Right, let's use case one. We can have seven times nine because we gave each student nine sweets. Okay. But you will need another two sweets, which means that there is a shortage. So if there's a shortage, you actually have to minus two. And that will signify or represent the number of sweets that the teacher has. 63 minus two equals to 61 sweets. You can also use case two, right? You will actually, and you should be able to get the same answer. So in this case, you have seven students, eight students, you'll get eight sweets, okay? But the difference in the cases is there will now be a five remaining sweets which are not given out, which means that there's an extra of five which you have to add it in. And you have 56 plus five, which will give me 61 sweets as well. So that's the answer for question five. We have completed this lesson. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Goodbye and see you again in another lesson.